Scientists, hello, welcome. Scientists, hello, welcome back. This is lesson five of the sixth grade unit, Oceans, Atmosphere, and Climate. We're trying to figure out why the air temperature in Christchurch, New Zealand is a little bit colder during El Nino years. So to help us try to figure that out today, we're gonna have a lesson about ocean currents and air temperature. So this video is part one. For this lesson, for part one of lesson five, you will need a couple of things. You need something to write with, something to write on, and you need another person to talk to about your ideas. Okay, so let's get started with a little bit of a mystery. This is a map of the continents and the oceans of planet Earth, and you can see that there's two yellow stars on the map. One is for Cape Town, which is found in the, on the continent of Africa, and Buenos Aires, which is on the continent of South America. And if you look closely at these two stars, you can see that they appear to be at very similar latitudes, which means we would expect that they're getting the same amount of energy from the sun. So knowing that, I want you to think a little bit about how you think the air temperature of these two places that are at similar latitudes would be. Okay, so we have two predictions. We have prediction one, which is that Buenos Aires and Cape Town have the same ocean surface temperature. Or we have our prediction B, which is that Buenos, and Bar Buenos Aires and Cape Town have different ocean surface temperatures. So we're thinking about not just the air temperature of these two cities, but also the surface ocean temperature. So the temperature of the ocean. Why does this matter? This matters because both Buenos Aires and Cape Town, just like Christchurch, New Zealand, are cities that are found on the coast. So they're close to ocean currents. And so we're trying to figure out how the ocean could affect the air temperature of the places that they pass. And as soon as we figure this out, you'll be one step closer to understanding how the temperature of the ocean current near Christchurch, New Zealand might affect the air temperature of that location. Okay, so to help us with this, we need a little bit more evidence than what we have right now. We, we know that they're next to the ocean, so let's take a look at what types of ocean currents are running past these two locations. So we have current A and current B. Current A passes right by Buenos Aires, and current B passes by Cape Town. So where is current A coming from? So if you look at it, what do you see that there? Where is it coming from? And if I look very carefully at current A, I can see that it starts by the equator and then travels down the coast of South America. So a current that starts at the equator, would that have more energy or less energy than a current that starts at the pole? And if you look at current B, you can see that this current seems to start closer to the pole and then it moves past Cape Town. So is current B going to have more or less energy than current A? So those are the kinds of things that we need to try to, you know, try to figure out. So what, what would help you understand this the best? Okay, so right now I'd like you to either discuss with your partner or just take a moment to think about what you're seeing here. So two questions. One, what does the map show? And how does the map provide evidence that the currents near Buenos Aires and Cape Town cause the ocean surface temperature at each, each location to be the same or different? So if you can, you can pause the video right now, take a moment to think about some ideas and jot them down. And if you have a partner, someone you can talk to about this, then tell them what you're thinking about. What, what are you noticing about this map? Okay, I hope you had a moment to think about your ideas. Let's take a look at um, this graphic. This graphic shows two things. It has current A near Buenos Aires and current B near Cape Town. And it's sort of like a kind of a fill in the blank matching story. So how would we describe current A near Buenos Aires? Would we say it carries no energy? Would we say it carries less energy? Would we say it carries more energy or would we say it carries the same amount of energy? So the ocean current that passes Buenos Aires comes from the equator. The closer a location is to the equator, the more energy it receives from the sun and therefore this current is going to be carrying more energy um, 
because the water moving away from the equator is actually warmer than the water around it. So that's pretty interesting about current A. So the ocean current that passes Cape Town comes from the polar region. Therefore, the current carries less energy and moves cooler water from the pole to this area. So after examining the map, I'd like you to either think about this or discuss this with someone else. And I want you to choose one of these two claims. Do you think that Buenos Aires and Cape Town would have the same exact ocean surface temperature? Remember that they are at the same latitude. They're receiving the same amount of energy from the sun. Or do you predict that Buenos Aires, prediction B, which is that Buenos Aires and Cape Town have different ocean surface temperatures? Remember that both of them have a current that's generating from different places on our planet, one from the equator, and one from the pole. So which of these two predictions do you think is best supported by the evidence that we're seeing in this map? So go ahead and pause the video right now, take um, an opportunity to think about your ideas, discuss them with a partner, and be ready to, to share some of your thoughts. Okay, I hope you took a moment to, to write down some of your ideas, or at least to think about them or talk with someone else about what you think. So let's take a look at this evidence more closely. So what we see here is that the current that passes Buenos Aires comes from the equator. So as we've already discussed, it carries more energy. So that means that there's a warm current there. And because of this, the ocean temperature near Buenos Aires is actually warmer than you'd expect for a location at that latitude. So Cape Town is the opposite. The current that passes Cape Town originates in the South Pole. It comes from the South Pole and it actually carries less energy. So that means that this cold current, as it's passing Cape Town, it actually, the water there is colder than you would expect for its latitude because the water is moving from a colder location. So we're going to try to, to use this information to see how that could affect the temperature of the air. So in the next part of this lesson, we're going to do an experiment to see how the temperature of water could affect the temperature of the air that it passes by. Okay, I'll see you in the next lesson. Hi, welcome to lesson five, part two. This is the water and air temperature experiment. We are going to try to collect some evidence to help us understand how the temperature of an ocean current can affect the temperature of the air above the location that it passes. So some of the things that you're going to need for this lesson are something to write on, something to write with, someone to talk to, but there's actually a couple of other pieces of equipment that if you have them at your house, you can join with me as I do this experiment. Okay, so you'll need a couple of cups. I'm gonna use foam cups, but if you don't have those, and probably you don't because they're not legal to sell in Seattle, but you could use a mug. Um, with some foil over the top. I have two layers of foil just to try to keep all of that warmth inside. So mugs work really well for that. Also, we're going to need some lids over the top of our cups. So I have some plastic cups here with the thermometer right in um, the bottom of the cup and the cup's just upside down so that I can measure the temperature of the air inside the cup. If you don't have two thermometers, it's actually fine. You can do one experiment at a time, but you'll need cups with lids and thermometers. Okay, so let's get into our experiment. The investigation question that we're trying to answer here is how do ocean currents affect the air temperature of the locations they pass? So if you look here at our picture, we can see that those gyres that form in the ocean, some of them are carrying warm water and some of them are carrying cold water. And how does that affect the temperature of the air above it? So we're gonna conduct an experiment to try to discover that. So this is the, the setup that we're gonna use. Mine's gonna be slightly different. It's gonna look like this instead of the picture that you see on the screen. So I'll set that up. And um, we're gonna try to figure out how the currents affect the air temperature. Okay, here's the setup. We are going to take one thermometer and put it into a lid. Like I said before, I'm using a plastic cup, I've drilled a hole in the bottom so the thermometer can be suspended in the cup. Then we're going to take one of our cups. This one's labeled cold water and this one's labeled hot water. And we are going to place the thermometers on the cup. The cup is empty. We're just going to measure the temperature of the air in the cup. So we'll place those both there. 
Then we're going to record our initial temperature of the air in the cup. Initial means beginning. So what does it start as? So the temperature of our cold water cup is 22.1 degrees Celsius. And the temperature of our hot water cup is 22.2 .2 degrees Celsius. So they're slightly different. So then what we'll do is we are going to record that. Um, you can use a data table. A data table like this one here on this picture would be great. You could just record that in your notes. Um, we just want to know what the initial air temperature is and also the final air temperature of both the cup with the hot water in it and the hot water and cold water. Okay, so once we have placed the hot and cold water in each of the cups, we will set our timer. I have a timer here for two minutes. I'm just going to use my cell phone to measure that. And then we're going to record the temperature of the air after two minutes has gone by. Now that we've recorded the initial temperature, let's go ahead and add the water. So in the cold cup, I have some cold water right here that I've just put into the little bowl with a spout so it's easy to, to pour. And we're going to fill this about halfway. And then I have my hot water. Make sure we don't mix up our thermometers and the hot water and my little tea kettle. We're going to pour it to the same height. Okay. Okay, I've got my timer ready. I'm going to place the lids on. There we go. And hit start. And then we'll come back to this um, after two minutes have gone by to see what the temperature change in the air might be. But let's just take a moment to talk about what the temperature or what the water represents. So in our cold water cup right here, the cold water represents a cold ocean current and the hot water in this cup here represents a warm ocean current. And the air that's in the cup rep just represents the air that is directly above where those ocean currents are going. You'll notice again that the thermometer is not touching the water. We're not measuring the temperature of the ocean currents. We're measuring the temperature of the air before the, uh, the water started flowing. And so both of the cups started at about 22 degrees Celsius. And so after a minute has gone by, then we will look at that one more time. While we're waiting for the experiment to be going, I just want you to always keep in your mind what this is all about. What is the evidence we're trying to collect? Okay, so let's see what our results are. Okay, the timer's going off. Turn that off. Okay, so let's take a look at our results. So um, the thermometer. Let's zoom this out so that you can see it too. Okay, so, oh, it's gone to sleep. Let's put it there. And we'll turn this one, oh, that one's there. Okay, um, I hope you can see that. Oh, dangerous, this is hot water. Okay, so as you can see, the hot water one is at 46.6 degrees Celsius. That's a huge increase. And the cold water one is at 17.9 degrees Celsius. So let's take a moment to record that in our data table. So as we can see from the data that we've collected, the temperature in both cups changed. In the cup with the hot water that was added, the air temperature went up quite a few degrees Celsius. And in the cup where the cold water was added, the temperature went down quite a lot as well. So let's try to figure out what this means. What happened to the air temperature in the cup where hot water was added? Um, and there's three choices that you could make. So I want you to think about this, maybe pause the video or talk with your partner. Do you think that the air temperature increased? Did the air temperature decrease? Or did the air temperature stay the same? So in order to answer this question, we would just need to quickly look at our results. The cup with the hot water added started at 22.2 .2 degrees, but after two minutes, it had risen all the way to 46.6 degrees. That's an increase of about 24 degrees Celsius. So we can say with confidence that the air temperature increased when the hot water was added. So what does that mean about the energy? If the temperature goes up, 
we know that the molecules of air are moving faster and have more kinetic energy. So we could say, what must have happened to the energy in the water and the air? So the energy in the air we know increased because the temperature increased. Now, this next part is tricky because we didn't take the temperature of the water before and after, so we can't say if the temperature went up or down. But what we know is that it's a closed system, that all the energy in the system has to stay in it. Energy doesn't come in from somewhere else or go out. So if the temperature of the air was increasing, we know it was getting that, that kinetic energy from the water. And so the water was transferring energy to the air, which means that some of the energy in the water is now in the air. So the temperature and the energy amount in the water actually went down. And so we can see that if we had measured the temperature of the water before, we would have found that it was colder after two minutes than it was when we started because some of the energy transferred to the air. Now the same exact thing is true for the cold water. The cold water started at 22.1 degrees and dropped down about four degrees Celsius to 17.9, 4.2 degrees Celsius. The temperature of the air above the cold water decreased by four degrees Celsius. Then we know that the energy level went down as well. Some of the energy, the kinetic energy in the air transferred to the cold water. The temperature of the cold water and the energy of the cold water would have increased slightly because energy can't be created or destroyed. It can transfer from one object to another, but it can't just disappear or go away. So what we learned from this experiment is that the air above hot or cold water can change temperature. So we're going to take this evidence and see if we can use it to help us understand how the air temperature of a place might change if a warm current or a cold current were passing by. Hello, this is lesson five, part three. And in this part of our lesson, we are going to be collecting evidence from the SIM. So the SIM is a model. Scientists use models all the time to try to understand what their data is telling them. We're going to use the SIM the way that a scientist would to collect evidence about how the air temperature is affected by an ocean current that flows by. That's the question that we're really wondering about at this point. So what you're going to need, you're going to need something to write with, something to write on. You'll need someone to talk about all of your awesome ideas with. And if you have access to the Ocean's Atmosphere and Climate Sim from Amplify Science, then you can use that too. But if you don't, it's okay because I will do the Sim activity on this video and so you can follow along. Okay, so this is what the Sim for Ocean's Atmosphere and Climate looks like. There is, this is a, just an image. This is in map mode, the surface map mode, and I have it set to show us the temperature. If you look down here, you can see that there are location sensors, and you can actually click on those and drag them up. This is location four, and this is location five. Here are the directions. Open the sim, follow the instructions to gather evidence. And what we're gathering evidence for is to answer the question about how ocean currents affect the air temperature of the locations that they pass. So the first step is select current map mode, and then for temperature view, select surface, and then place sensors at location four and location five. And then take a moment to jot down in your notes what the starting temperature of those two locations are before you do anything else. Okay, so I've just opened the sim so that you can see what this looks like. So you'll notice over here that I'm already in current map, which is what I want to be in, and I need to change the temperature view to its surface. Okay, so here are our location sensors. We're going to drag one to location four, and when I do that, you'll see, whoa, this really cool thing appears. It shows some arrows, and it shows land, it shows water. It shows you the temperature in three locations. It shows you what the temperature in Celsius of the air, it tells you the temperature in Celsius of the land, and it tells you the temperature in 
again, Celsius for the water because scientists use the metric system and you're a scientist, so you're going to use it too. So then we're going to take our other location and we're going to place it here, our other sensor and put it in that location. One cool thing is that if you want to move these around, you can grab them and they move and that was supposed to go with it. So there's a little bit of a glitch. So maybe it'll work or maybe it won't. I'll just put it back here. It tells you what the latitude of these two locations are. And if you look at them, you can see that they are both 38 degrees north of the equator. So what does that tell us? It tells us that they are receiving the exact same amount of energy from the sun. And if you look at their air temperatures, yeah, their air temperatures are the same. 17.2 degrees Celsius at location four and 17.2 degrees Celsius at location five. So they have the same air temperature. What we're going to see is how does the ocean current moving past this location affect it? Okay, so... Let's go back to our directions. After you've recorded the temperature of the, the air at location four and five, then press play. And then observe how the motion of the currents in the side view. And if I kind of go, this is what the side view looks like. You'll be able to see um, the temperature of the ocean there in the side view. What's happening to that? and um, observe how the energy is being transferred between the water and the air. You might want to do this a couple of times. There's, there's no need to limit yourself on how many times you do this activity in the sim because it's actually really fascinating. You'll notice that there are these three arrows. So let's just take a look at those real quick before you go off and do it. This big giant arrow is showing you energy from the sun to the surface. How much energy are they getting? And if you look at these, you can see they are identical. But what if I took a location of the sim, let me open it up again, that was from maybe a different location. So if I take this one and I drag it to somewhere by the equator, and if I look here, do you see how much larger that arrow is from where it was at sensor five? This location is receiving more energy from the sun than location four is. Okay, but we want to go back because for this, we actually want them to be getting the same exact amount of sun or the same amount of energy from the sun. Okay, so the next thing is that um, go ahead and run the sim for like two minutes. And after you're done, record the temperature of the air. And it's important to do a couple of things. One, record the air temperature for both locations and also record if it was next to a cold current or a warm current. Okay, so at this time, go ahead and get on the sim yourself and explore it. Hit play, set yours up the same way I have this, and see what kind of data you get. Okay, and if you are going to stay with me, then let's go ahead and do this together. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I will press play. And you'll see all these little currents moving around. I wonder if I can move this now. No, it still doesn't want to move. That's fine. Um, but it's okay. We can actually see enough of what's going on here. Maybe I can move that a little bit anyway. Okay, so you can see that the water is moving up the continent here. Let's let me move my picture. There we go. Okay, so now I have it at two times. Let's move me down there. Whoa, this is moving really fast. Um, this definitely looks like a warm current moving past location five. And what about location four. Um, it looks like the current here is moving from the pole. This definitely looks like cold water coming past location four. So let's take a look at this. Um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit on that so we can see that a bit better. If I look at this, let me try one more zoom. Okay, let's move this up a little bit so we can see it. If we look at this very carefully, we can see that energy is transferring from the sun to the surface and then from the surface to the air. That's what we learned about in lesson two. If you haven't watched lesson two, go back and watch it. It will help this make a lot more sense. And once this air is being heated by the surface, um, we can see that some of the energy from the air is actually getting lost to the water, which makes sense because the water is much colder than the air. This water moving down from the pole is colder than um, the, the location it's passing. And so some of the energy from that warmer air is transferring to the cold water, just like we saw in our experiment with the cup that had cold water and energy from the air transferred 
to the cup. And then in this one, we can see the opposite is true. We can see, oops, it doesn't want to move past the picture. That's fine. Um, we can see here that this water is really warm. And as it's flowing past, it's actually heating the air. And that air is getting so warm that it's actually able to transfer some of the energy back to the land. So if you lived here in this location, you would have a warmer air temperature than you would if you lived here at this location, even though they're getting the same exact amount of energy from the sun. Okay, so let's go ahead and pause our video and um, welcome back everyone who did the activity on their own. Okay, scientists, welcome back. Let's discuss what we learned and what we discovered as we explored the sim together. So what we want to know is why is the temperature shown at sensor 4 different from sensor 5? What is happening there? What we saw at sensor 4 is that sensor 4 is near cold current and sensor 5 is near a warm current. So how is that going to affect what happens at both places? On this image, you can see this cold current moving down from the pole, and you can see this warmer current moving up from the equator. The equator is getting so much energy from the sun, and the pole is getting so much less. And so the surface of the pole is getting heated with less energy than the surface at the equator. The thing about water, is that it doesn't stay where it is. And so as it moves away, it brings that energy with it. And that actually heats places on the planet that normally wouldn't get that much energy from the sun. So location five is getting warmer. So sensor four near this cold current, the colder water is moving away from the pole. Sensor five is near a warm current with warmer water moving up from the equator. So in conclusion, what we can take away from this is an understanding that because sensor four is near that cold current and the warmer water, that actually caused energy to transfer from the air to the water. And so the air is losing energy because as the cold current is coming by, the warmer air loses energy to the cold current. So the air temperature at that location is actually gonna be a little colder than it would be if there wasn't an ocean there. The sensor five is near a warm ocean current. So as the warm ocean current moves past it, the water is so much warmer than the air that it transfers energy to the air, which makes that location have a warmer air temperature than it would normally have. Okay, let's look at Buenos Aires and Cape Town. At the beginning of this lesson, I showed you this picture and we wondered about it. It was a little bit of a puzzle how these two locations on our planet that are, that are at the same latitude might have the same or different air temperatures. So using what you learned in this lesson from the sim and from the experiment, how would you complete the following sentences? Okay, here we go. So let's look at Buenos Aires. You'll notice that current A is going right past it and we can see current A starts up here at the equator that's getting lots of energy from the sun. And as that warm water moves away from the equator, it takes all that energy with it, and some of that moves right past Buenos Aires. Buenos Aires has warmer water than you would expect from a location at that latitude. So if the water is warmer than the air, will energy transfer from the water to the air or from the colder air to the warmer water? Okay, so if you said in Buenos Aires the ocean transfers energy to the air, then you're right. That's exactly what we see happening. So Cape Town's the opposite. Cape Town has this cold ocean current that's moving down past Cape Town from the pole. Current B originates at the poles. So at Cape Town, the ocean is colder and the air is warmer than the ocean. So as the cold ocean moves past Cape Town, some of that energy from the air at Cape Town actually gets transferred to the ocean because it's warmer than the ocean. So let's fill in the sentence. In Cape Town, the air transfers energy to the ocean. Okay, so now that we know that there's some energy being transferred from current A to Buenos Aires, and some energy from the air being transferred to the current at Cape Town, 
then let's look one more time at these two claims that we looked at at the beginning. So prediction A says these two cities are at similar latitudes, getting the same amount of energy from the sun. Therefore, I would expect the ocean surface temperatures to be the same. And prediction B said, no, the currents moving past these two locations are going to be different. So let's have a discussion. If you have a partner, then I'd love for you to discuss with your partner um, what, which of these two claims you were thinking is best supported by all the evidence that we've collected today. And be ready to share some of your ideas with your classmates, with your teacher, with um, your friends that you're going to call and talk about all this cool science. And I will see you in part four of lesson five coming up next. Scientists, this is it. We're almost done with lesson five. This is part four. And during this part of the lesson, we are going to look again at the question we're trying to answer through this whole unit, which is why is the temperature of Christchurch, New Zealand colder during El Nino years? So for this part of the lesson, you're going to need something to write with, something to write on, and someone to talk to. Okay, let's, let's start this last part of the lesson by looking one more time at this graph that we've seen a couple times. What this graph is telling us is the average ocean surface temperature near Christchurch, New Zealand. And we can see two bars here. One is showing us the temperature of the ocean surface temperature on a normal year. And this other one is showing us the ocean surface temperature during an El Nino year. So let's, let's shrink this graph a little bit and let's take a look at these two sentences here. Since the ocean temperature is colder during El Nino years, would there be more energy or less energy transferring to the air? So if the ocean temperature is colder during El Nino years, then there's going to be less energy transferred during an El Nino year. Okay, so if less energy is transferred during an El Nino year, then let's see how we would fill this in. So this says, this will make the air temperature blank compared to a normal year. So if we see in the, the two graphs over here that the ocean temperature near Christchurch, New Zealand, is just much colder during an El Nino year, an El Nino year. And so less energy will transfer to the air from the ocean. This is definitely going to make the air temperature decrease during an El Nino year. We already knew that the air temperature was colder during El Nino. We already knew that the ocean temperature was colder during an El Nino. But now, from all of the evidence that you've collected today, you can explain that because the ocean temperature is colder, the air temperature is going to be colder as well because some of that energy from the air will have to transfer to that colder ocean current, making the air temperature drop down as well. Okay, so this is an exciting moment because I'm about to show to you a map. This map shows what the ocean currents look like in near New Zealand during a normal year. So if you look here, you can see that there are two major currents off the coast of New Zealand that travel past Christchurch. And we can see one of them starts at the equator, moves down past the east coast of Australia, and then wraps around, and then passes down around New Zealand. If you've ever seen Finding Nemo, then you might know a little about, about the East Australian Current, or the EAC, because the turtles like to, to ride that current, according to the movie. I can't say for sure if that's scientifically accurate, but you could do some research and find out. But this this current that passes there originates at the equator. Okay, that's important. The second current also starts at the equator where the water temperature is very, very warm and travels down past the coast. Okay, so let's fill these um, sentences in. During normal years, the ocean currents moving past the coast of Christchurch, New Zealand start at the... Did you say equator? If you said equator, then you're right. Give yourself a pat on the back. So let's look at the second sentence. The temperature of the ocean currents that move past the coast of Christchurch, New Zealand would be blank 
than the air in Christchurch, New Zealand. So these ocean currents that are coming down past um, Christchurch, New Zealand are coming from the equator. The water is warmer. So some energy from these currents will transfer to the air above Christchurch, New Zealand. This will make the, let's read this one more time. The temperature of the ocean currents that move past the coast of Christchurch, New Zealand would be warmer than the air in Christchurch, New Zealand. So let's look at this last sentence. During normal years, the blank transfers energy to the blank. How would you fill that in? If the ocean is warmer, then the ocean will transfer energy to the air, making the air warmer during a normal year. Okay, scientists, we've done it. We've learned some new key concepts and let's review them because this is exciting. Okay, so this is the first new key concept today. Energy transfers from warmer substances to colder substances. We kind of already knew that, but this goes on. It says warmer currents transfer energy to cooler air, and warmer air transfers energy to cooler currents. We've absolutely discovered this today as we have collected evidence, use, doing our experiment, as we've explored the sim, as we've discussed things together. This is exciting. The second new key concept that we've learned today is that when an ocean current comes from the equator, it brings warmer than expected water to the places it passes, and the water is warmer than the nearby air. Warm water, warmer than nearby air. When the ocean current comes from the pole, it brings colder than expected water to the places it passes, and the water is colder than the nearby air. This is cool. Okay, congratulations on these new key concepts. I'm gonna give you one little challenge, something to do before we come back together to do lesson six. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. I want you to think about this. You can either discuss with a partner or you can um, just think on your own and write some thoughts down, but be ready to, to come with your ideas prepared before lesson six. Okay. What ideas do you, and if you have a partner, and your partner have about why Christchurch, New Zealand's air temperature might be cooler during El Nino? We know what it's like during normal years now. We saw the, the pictures of the, the currents. What do you think might be happening during an El Nino year? It's absolutely okay if you're not sure, but try to use all the new words we've learned so far. I think as you use all those words, you might be able to develop your ideas. Okay. Don't forget to do this before lesson six. I'll see you next time. Bye.